CataractCoach.com Cataract Quiz Why did the anterior lens capsule rip uncontrollably? Let's watch. Now it looks like a pretty routine case. We have an anonymous resident who's operating making the paracentesis and did you just see what happened or did you miss it? Let me show you in slow motion. Watch carefully. Look at the very tip of the blade entering the anterior chamber and there it is inadvertently hitting the anterior lens capsule and puncturing it. That's going to be a problem. The reason it's a problem is because the resident doesn't notice. So the anterior lens capsule has this rupture here, small pinpoint break. But look what happens when he injects viscoelastic. He inadvertently points the viscoelastic right at that one spot. And when he injects, the capsule just rips. And that ripped all the way out to the zonger support. What are we going to do now? Let me show you the rest of the case. We'll show it to you at two times speed. You can tell we can't create the rexus now. That rip is all the way out to the zonular attachment. So we're going to go ahead and make an additional nick in the capsule with the cystotome and then complete a capsular rexus. Now here's the problem. That rip out to the zonular support has a danger or potential of going out all the way past the equator of the lens and then to the posterior capsule. So that could become an extension of that rip to the posterior capsule, resulting in an open capsule and lots of problems. So what are we gonna do differently here? So we've completed the rexus, then we know there's that one weak area. Here's the completion of the rexus, intact other than the one spot. Now some people would say do a can opener and make other areas of weakness, but let me show you a different technique here. Very gentle hydrodissection, away from that one area. And once we have it a little bit higher dissected, we're gonna to try to get this nucleus up. So using the cannula to help lift the nucleus up into the anterior chamber. I want that cataract to be out of the capsular bag. So use the chopper now. Here's where I'm helping the resident, lifting the nucleus, tilting it out of the capsular bag. Now let me make another paracentesis and inject some viscoelastic, disperse the viscoelastic behind the lens nucleus and help bring this up and forward. There's the lens nucleus now, out of the capsular bag. Don't want to place any stress on the posterior capsule or that one area of weakness that we have. Phaco probe's going to go in the eye. I'm going to help the resident with the chopper. The resident's going to hold the phaco probe. And this is luckily not a very dense cataract. We can simply emulsify it. So again, we want to stay out of the capsular bag, stay at the iris plane. You don't need too much phago energy for a lens that's this soft. And we're going to remove the lens nucleus. Resin's coming out of the eye to readjust, but removing the lens nucleus without placing stress on that one area capsule. And that's also going to be an issue when we do cortex removal and when we insert the lens. So throughout the case now, we have to be very careful and do things a little differently. So capsule's fortunately intact. Don't let the AC collapse too much. That's going to be a problem if it does. There's a little last piece of lens material there, a little lens nucleus. Although it looks like it's relatively soft, perhaps we can just take it down with the IA probe. There it goes in the IA probe, a little bit of help from the cannula. And this epinuclear shell as well as cortex can be removed. Now notice for the IA probe, start away from the area where it's weak. Attack the areas of cortex where you know you have an intact and strong capsular rexus. Do that one spot at the very, very end. So do the subincision area, do the area to the left, but the one spot where the capsule ran out, the anterior capsular rup rupture happened, we need to be very cautious. So now splitting into the bimanual mode for this probe, makes life very easy. So the right hand is doing the infusion through the main incision. The left hand is doing the aspiration via the paracentesis. And so this is nicely cleaned up and that looks great. And again, we're avoiding that one area. Do that area last. That's because if it does end up ripping, then I don't have so much lens cortex in the eye. You remove the lion's share of it. So here cleaning up the Lens cortex is looking pretty good, and I'm watching the posterior capsule to make sure I don't see a line there or a rupture there. It looks intact. Now, here's the dicey part. Be very careful. 
go deep in the bag away from the anterior capsular rim because you don't want to inadvertently grab that one edge of capsule and have this rip even further back or across the posterior capsule. That's pretty good. Now, don't come out of the eye yet. Keep the infusion on, and we're going to fill the capsular bag with the cohesive viscoelastic and now pull the probe out. That prevents the anterior capsule um, from ripping because you don't shallow out the AC. Here comes the eye well. Single piece acrylic is fine. You don't have to place the sulcus lens in this case. You can place the lens in the bag. Just be careful to get it in the capsular bag <clears throat> with the haptics oriented 90 degrees away from that area of capsular bag weakness. So we can rotate it a little bit more, lift up the iris if we need to to see underneath it, and we can see that we have a good capsular rexus other than that one area. So that looks pretty good. This patient's going to have a nice outcome. Now look what we're doing here. Hydrate and seal the incision before removing viscoelastic. Why is that? So we're just doing a sweep here in the anterior chamber, remove some viscoelastic, and we're going to try be very gentle here. Drop your infusion pressure, drop the flow rate, take out the viscoelastic, be very cautious. You don't want to cause too much turbulence here. You just don't want to risk having that broken capsular edge run all the way to the back. And it still could at this point. Now, before coming out of the eye, again, BSS on a cannula. Let's get this anterior chamber inflated, the incisions sealed and hydrated. And of course, maximum resident benefit, maximum patient safety. Let's place a stitch in this eye to avoid further complications.